Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences. Welcome to the East West Show. Check Charles, my name, with GNE TV. Uh, well, it has been about a, a week and a half that Americans have been bothered with the uh, Bergdahl case. Bergdahl and the U.S. Army service member who abandoned his comrades on duty while he was uh, supposed to be the guard on duty and uh, with lots of consequences. And of course, he ended up himself in deep, deep, deep trouble. Right now, we're talking about consequences. And there are different takes. There are diff different uh, takes on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side. Somebody say the punishment is kind of fair. Somebody say the punishment is kind of too soft. And uh, well, be it right or wrong, I have to bring the crying baby to the mother, right? The crying baby to the mother, in this case, is my dear friend, Thomas Jonathan. Thomas Jonathan is a trial attorney himself. As a matter of fact, I dragged him out of court, and he had to go back to court right after this, <laughs> right? Thank you for, for sharing time, spare time. Thanks for having thank me, Thank you Jack. for spare your life for this. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Very good. Thanks, and everybody. he also has had been the uh, U.S. Navy uh, service member, Navy, Navy service intelligence officer, uh, dispatched in Iraq, and served his time gloriously, and returned with the glory, and he kind of like fits into both. Right? Number one, he is a trial attorney himself, and number two, he is a glorious U.S. veteran. Okay. And by the way, on the Veterans Day, which is today, uh, congratulations to you. Thank you, Jack. It uh, was. It was uh, Honor to serve. I was happy to do it. Mm -hmm. I would do it again. Uh, oh, by the way, the the, the 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 Veterans Day is the is the birthday for U.S. Navy, right? Well, it's there's a, a few birthdays right around now. Mm -hmm. Today's the tenth, which is the Marine Corps' birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, the eleventh Veterans Day, and then the Navy's birthday is in October. So, ah. But today's the Marine Corps' birthday. Marine Corps' birthday. Yes. All right. Good. Good. Oh, very so good. That's, mm -hmm. So they get today. Congratulations to you. Yeah, the All right, get very it today. good. All right, yeah. good. So, uh, to lots of folks, they say the punishment kind of a uh, uh, too soft, right? And uh, to lots of folks, they didn't even know what he did, what happened to him. And to uh, even lesser people know that he was home only uh, subject to the exchange program with uh, Guantanamo Bay detainees. Uh, lots of unknown part. So shall we start by asking you what had happened that very night? What did he do, please? <coughs> Thank you very much, Jack. Mm -hmm. It's 2009, it's Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, Bo Birdahl's with the, called the 425th. So it's the 25th Airborne, which is out of Alaska, and he's in the 4th uh, brigade combat team, so it's called the 425th. I see, Corps 425th, yeah. They call themselves the Spartans. Mm -hmm. They're a uh, highly decorated, great military division, airborne. They were mm -hmm. in Iraq as well. So he's in a co com uh, combat outpost, and he walks off his post, the co um, stacks up his things, takes his compass, mm -hmm. and he walks away. He had sent a note to his parents um, in, the, in the days or weeks before saying, um, you know, I don't, he's not pleased with the way things are going mm -hmm. and some, some other things where he, he seems dejected. His father writes a letter back and says, uh, be aware of your conscience or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he walks off his post. Uh -huh. There is a, um, someone said that he wrote a note and left a note. There's been no evidence of that note, so that, uh -huh. hasn't, that hasn't developed. All right. And so why he left has been a, has been debated. Uh, mm -hmm. He's captured. When a service member goes missing, that is the most serious um, event to the commanding officer. I it see. It takes priority over everything. So I if see. we, if you and I were in the combat outpost, or mm -hmm. probably it goes to the headquarters that is supporting it at a forward operating base, mm -hmm. like the mothership, All right. they hear a soldier's missing. Automatically, what's gonna happen is everything that was planned, if they had 
a top 10 kill and capture list. Mm -hmm. They had planned operations. Yeah, yeah. They stop it all. Ah, what they say is postpone everything get our, to get to the point. Get our man back. All right. Our man's missing, and it's mm -hmm. called um, duty status. Like everybody has a duty status. Duty status. And mm -hmm. um, unknown, whereabouts unknown. And the uh, nickname for that is called a dust one. Dust? Dust one. Uh -huh. Because it's D U S T W U N. Uh -huh. Duty status unknown. Duty status, whereabouts unknown. Oh. And they will dedicate everything they can to find that person. I see. And what we know now is that um, during those efforts, uh, service members were very badly hurt, mm -hmm. um, uh, including brain injury, amputation, spinal cord injury. Yeah. And, it w and it's terrible. The um, When I was overseas in Iraq, there was a, a, a dust one situation. Um, but what had happened was there was an attack on an overwatch and um, two members, two soldiers were pulled after a grenade attack on one of their Humvees mm -hmm. and their, their remains were missing. Oh. So for the 3rd Infantry Division that we supported mm -hmm. and coincidentally the 425th, the Spartans were there too. Oh. They were part of the dust one to try to find those people if they were still alive, and then they found their remains. Mm -hmm. And we later learned that they died of their wounds when, before their bodies were oh, taken. I see, I but see. that becomes the number one operation. Oh, yeah. In other words, even, even to a dead body, the army takes that uh, so seriously. Get our, get our soldier back becomes the number one priority of the get command. Get our soldier back. Get, it becomes uh, okay. the number one focus of the command. And that's why with all the efforts, uh, everything uh, postponed, this was prioritized when on looking for him. Uh -huh. uh, in the process of looking, somebody got wounded. Yeah, at least three people got wounded very badly. Uh -huh. uh, but that's what happened. So then he's captured by the Taliban, mm -hmm. and he becomes a... Um, uh, was he captured or was he walking into that Taliban? Well, there, you know, it's hard to say. Um, his version is that he was captured by mm -hmm. the Taliban. Mm -hmm. Um, the Taliban, as I, if I remember right, they put out propaganda saying that he had um, walked into their camp or something. All right. That's mm -hmm. probably not what happened. Probably what happens is he's captured. Mm -hmm. And then he's in captivity. And the, the reports of his captivity are terrible. He's in a cage. Mm -hmm. uh, he's tortured. And then he tries to escape twice. Uh, one time he's gone for as many as five days mm -hmm. before he's recaptured. Uh-huh. Uh, he is on some videos where he's, um, you know, proof of life videos. He's able to get a letter to his parents through the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. During the proof of life video, he mentions his, he mentions Nelson Mandela's death. So then everybody kind of knows when the video is filmed. Mm -hmm. uh, he becomes the subject of a prisoner swap. Mm -hmm. There was a contemplated six prisoner swap with mm -hmm. senior Taliban members that were held in Guantanamo Bay. Mm -hmm. One of them died, the potential prisoner swaps. Mm -hmm. So five senior members of the Taliban mm -hmm. were swapped for him. Mm -hmm. uh, an Army Special Forces group went to the prisoner swap and um, oversaw it, right. brought Berndahl mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. and then it became very political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two parts of the politics on it immediately. Mm -hmm. um, President Obama had assured Congress that it would, that he would notify it of any prisoner swap within 30 days or something. He didn't do that. He uh, authorized the mission as commander in chief mm -hmm. and then argued that he had the authority to do that. Um, because he had to within, he didn't have 30 days to do it. Mm -hmm. that, that was a political agitation that people were upset about that. And then there was a um, Rose Garden ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then National Security Advisor Susan Rice uh, said in an interview that uh, Birdall had served with distinction. And that caused some problems too because what came out is this um, desertion and misbehavior in front of the enemy, those charges. Mm -hmm. So um, that conduct is investigated then. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's home now. 
and he was at a he was given a desk job mm -hmm. while this uh, investigation goes on. An investigating officer, a senior army officer, um, investigates, and it, it leads to charges being brought against him mm -hmm. in the uh, military courts. Two charges: number one, desertion; mm -hmm. number two, misbehavior in front of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a, what's called a preliminary hearing, just like we have in mm -hmm. civilian courts. All right. But mm -hmm. only these criminal court, uh, excuse me, only these military courts can punish military members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, military yeah. crimes. That's the problem. That's a problem. For yeah, military yeah, crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's all part of what's called the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which mm -hmm. came in 1950. So anyway, there's what's called an Article 32 hearing, which is a preliminary hearing. And the senior officer, who's acting as the judge, hears all the evidence and then makes a recommendation for no prison time. Mm -hmm. The superior officer of that senior officer reverses him and sends it into a court martial, which is a trial. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, during the trial or in the trial process, the judge sets a jury trial and shortly before the case was good, going to go to a jury, mm -hmm. Birdall pled guilty, Sergeant Birdall at the time, mm -hmm. now pleads guilty to two counts. Number one, desertion, mm -hmm. and number two, misbehavior in front of in the front enemy. enemies. Yeah. And uh, it's called a naked plea because mm -hmm. there's no agreement. There wasn't an agreement for oh, I see. so many years or no years. Mm -hmm. The prosecution wanted 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the um, senior army officer. Yeah. Let's yeah. take a very short break. Sure. And looks that we we'll really want to get into those uh, important details before we can jump on a correct, more correct, relatively more correct conclusion of this case. Yeah, sure, right, great. Uh, uh, my dear audience, we'll be right back, please. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. And we are talking about a case that bothers uh, everybody. Uh, at least has been one week and a half, right? I know that I was bothered a lot. And, uh, and uh, well, anyway, uh, to get to the point, though, I have touched base with uh, my friends on the left-hand side, and I touched base with my friend on the right-hand side. Now in the middle, I would like to, I have to, bring the crying baby to the mother. In this case, the mother of the crying baby is my dear friend, Mr. Thomas Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson is a trial attorney, successful trial attorney. As a matter of fact, like I said, I dragged him out of court and he has to go back to <laughs> right after this, right? Thank you for that. And uh, he's dealing uh, lots of on a day-to-day -day basis, high profile cases, sometimes the death related, life related. And right now he'll be representing some uh, kind of like a, a wrongful death case, right? Yes, that's wrongful correct. Death case, without having to go into the detail of your case. And what's more importantly is that uh, Mr. Johnson was a U.S. Navy intelligence service member and he served his, uh, his part to the country gloriously and returned home. Uh, I'm, uh, you were so lucky, you returned a whole piece, right? Oh, I was very fortunate. Nothing missing, right? Nothing missing. I Nothing was, missing. Um, I yeah, was, uh, still fortunate. 10 fingers, anything or everything, right? 100%. 100% yeah. intact. Uh, 100% intact, Jack, and we're grateful Very for good. because a lot of All people... Right. He returned, Jack. but with the look, with the glory, lots of glory. And he was the Army intelligence officer, and he, that experience is helping him doing case research and vice versa. So anyway, uh, we are talking about the uh, Bao Bergdahl case, and uh, that guy, in my eyes, is a deserter, and somebody called him a traitor, some guy somebody called a treason or whatsoever. I don't want to use a so extreme term, but it is something we do not want to accept. Right. So back to my friend uh, Thomas. You are saying that uh, when he finally pleaded this uh, naked plea, what called naked plea? Naked plea, yes. Naked plea, was that good to him or was that bad to him? Right. Big risk. Okay, because uh -huh. what he's saying at the time is, I don't know what you're going to do, Judge. I don't have a deal in place, 
but I trust that you're going to look at the facts of the case and it'll work out better for me than a trial mm -hmm. would. Okay. That you'll do what's just. Okay. So then the judge, this is the second judge who's looked at the case now, um, Judge Nance, he's a, a colonel in the Army, Colonel Nance, uh, judge. And so now he's looking at the evidence, mm -hmm. what we know about Birdall or what he knew about Birdall mm -hmm. and the consequences of what happened. The consequences of what happened were terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, there were three, at least three service members who were very badly hurt in the search operations to mm -hmm. recover okay. Sergeant Birdall when we were talking about the Dust One operations. Mm -hmm. One was a Navy SEAL, um, who I understand is wheelchair bound. Um, there was a soldier who suffered loss of limbs. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like uh, 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 it's amputated. Hard mm -hmm. to even think of and then another soldier who suffered a bad brain injury and so they they were hurt horribly so if we look at the situation from these men's perspective mm -hmm. very very um, mm -hmm. it's terrible so what the judge has to do is weigh what happened from the consequences with the crime mm -hmm. what were the two crimes Desertion. Desertion. Walking off a post mm -hmm. is what's called desertion. You're not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Misbehavior in front of the enemy, mm -hmm. old sounding. All right. <laughs> That's not engaging an enemy, uh, running from combat, mm -hmm. having cowardice. In danger his own comrades. Yes, not, that is, so it's a long list of things, but that's what that is. And that's a crime too. Both crimes are punishable by death, by the way. Very oh, serious. they are punishable by death. Both of them are desertion and misbehavior in front mm -hmm. of the enemy. Okay. And uh, so then the judge has to weigh the crime, some of the consequences of the crime, and it's, it's what else he knows about it. And one, th one area that they looked at was <clears throat> Birdall's mental capacity. He went through this army test, psych mm -hmm. psychological mm -hmm. test, and the Army determined that he had a severe mental illness uh -huh. uh, related to schizophrenia. Uh -huh. And um, so he was, um, he had severe mental problems. Mm. The Coast Guard discharged him mm. for psychological reasons mm -hmm. within 30 days. So he had some um, severe psychological problems. Mm -hmm. Probably related. But that to was before he enters the army. Bef yeah. All right. That's a lifelong mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. And then they look at the Judge Nance looked at his captivity mm -hmm. as a mitigating factor. That's what they call it. So he mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. there's a mitigation because mm -hmm. this person has always already been confined and tortured. Mm -hmm. So he decided that he would accept a plea of guilty for those two crimes mm -hmm. and then he punished him by a money fine, a reduction in rank, and then what's a dishonorable discharge, mm -hmm. which for a soldier, there anyone in the armed forces is the the most shameful uh -huh. the most shameful thing that could happen. Okay. Because you're stripped of any benefit and mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. More than just benefits, it's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. if you're dishonorably discharged, All right. you've disgraced your family mm -hmm. and yourself. Yeah, that's exactly people get pieces about. <coughs> yeah. And uh, in consideration, you said, in consideration of uh, his uh, sufferings or, or tortures or whatever in the, in the confinement when he was uh, during his captivity, though, would that be a major count or uh, part, at least a partial count or so? Most people that have looked at this case mm -hmm. have thought that his confinement um, and torture mm -hmm. was the number one factor in the judge um, deciding against additional confinement time. Uh -huh. So they, most people that have looked at this have studied what are some of the mitigating factors. The confinement's number one, mm -hmm. probably his psychological condition that he was uh, probably schizophrenic mm -hmm. is or something related to that is number two. There were some things in the paper about how uh, the president had said 
dirty, rotten traitor should be executed. Yeah, it should be ex executed. Disgrace. Any, uh, and since the president's in the chain of command, there was an argument made by the defense lawyers that, mm -hmm. hey, I'm not getting a fair shake here for my client. Mm -hmm. And the judge said that he would take that into account for mitigation too. Mm -hmm. But if, if that was a factor, to, most people that are looking at it think that that's a very small factor if it was really a factor. That's really just a political thing, right? People may be on the left mm -hmm. not liking what the president said and, you know, ha, 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 look at this, what this yeah, person's yeah, yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But really what the judge looked at, I think, is the fact that um, he had been confined, and um, um, and that was a terrible confinement, you know, mm -hmm. torture and cage that type, mm -hmm. that type of horrible conduct. So All I right. think that that's what um, the judges that decided. Now I understand it's on appeal. Military members, if they're discharged, are entitled to an appeal. If mm -hmm. they're dishonorably discharged, are entitled to an appeal. Uh, and, and they'll have to see how that comes out. Uh, and, you know, people are, uh, it's been political. Mm -hmm. It's been political since the start. I think a lot of people had a hard time with the prisoner swap. And uh, some people would say mm -hmm. we're giving up a prisoner for someone who's a, that's deserted, a soldier who's betrayed mm -hmm. his his brothers and sisters in arms. And, you know, I thought about that because the five people that were released, they weren't low level people, Jack. No, yeah, of course. They were high level. They are high, go they are one of the top, I mean, they are, they are, there were six of them, right? Uh, one originally. died halfway. Yes, so five. And there are five. My question, and lots of uh, my folks, they kind of were thinking about what a big price. That was such a big price. On him, is he them worth that is much? He, is he worth it? You know, that's a good question, Jack. Yeah. But let's look at it this way: it, for the worth of our people, we talked about the operations we do to get them back. Mm -hmm. How they become the number one priority. It's expensive, but America, we're big spenders when it comes to that, um, and we we spend what it takes to get our people back. You know what's an interesting comparison mm -hmm. is there was an Israeli soldier a few years ago. I don't know if you remember this case, this situation, but there was a Israeli soldier captured by the Palestinians. Uh huh. I don't remember his name. Uh huh. The uh, Israelis traded sixteen hundred Palestinian soldiers for the one Israeli soldier. Sixteen hundred to one. Hundred to one. So they're big spenders too. Um, so in America, it's expensive, but we're we only a five to one. <laughs> so if you and they are doing sixteen hundred to one. Sixteen hundred to one. Uh -huh. So and that one as a soldier. One was a soldier. One was a soldier. Okay, uh, very good. I, I can't remember his name, Jack, but he was an Israeli soldier captain. Yeah, probably if you online search sixteen to one, sixteen hundred to one, yeah, that will it, pop out it because will pop up. because the number is so 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 so. Telltale, right? Yes. Okay, very yeah. good. Uh, my dear friend, today with my good friend uh, Thomas Johnson, attorney and law, trial attorney, by the way, he's been busy with trial cases for the high profiles, some cases are death related. Uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Johnson, has uh, uh, been deployed to Iraq as one Navy, uh, as one of the Navy intelligence officers. Uh, and he worked and he served his glorious time there, returned uh, intact, returned with lots of glory. And he's sharing his thoughts from both uh, the turning point of view as a soldier point of view to talk about it, uh, about the reading of the case so that we understand better, so that we know what a country we have, what kind of country we have. Ours is a country that is willing to, to get you to get a soldier at a cost of a five top of Taliban. And there are even countries who are doing it for 1,600 to one, anyway. And number two, we understand desertion and also uh, misconduct or misbehavior in front of your enemies are crimes militarily to face sentences even. All right, those are a very basic education that we need to know. Let's take a very short moment out 
when we come back, we would probably find out from uh, my friend attorney uh, that what kind of a social impact it brings. Right? Please stay with us. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my dear fellow Americans, let's come back to the uh, study of American system to military justice system to find out the case of Bergdahl that has been justified. Uh, with me today is my good friend, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, Thomas Johnson, is a trial attorney and he is handling uh, those high profile cases in court on a day to day basis. I try to call you, and almost every day you're in court. And all I get is a message, I'm in court. <laughs> I'm in court. I'm in court, like that, right? Okay. Yeah, Very good. Okay. Then, well, it's good to be busy, anyway. Now, from two point of view, he himself served in Iraq gloriously. He can tell you his take from the military point of view and his take from a judicial point of view, right? So both ways. Now, we understand that everybody has his own take, right? We understand that probably the judge has a broader sense of consideration to the whole case rather than we, us, looking at one point. Right? Okay, now, problem is that we are a case, case country, case law country, right? Next occurrences goes to the case goes to the case examples, right? How are we going to handle that? The next traitor is going to get unpunished with no jail time, just following that. How about that? Well, let's talk about the Army culture, if we can. Mm -hmm, because please. I think what you're- That's you're, more important, yes. What you're asking is, are, are there going to be more people walking off their post because, All right. because of what happened? That's exactly, now? that's exactly. Yeah. You get, you get them negatively encouraged. Let's assume for, for the question that we have a, um, a normal, healthy young person entering the service, okay? Mm -hmm. Which you should, you know, the recruiters should be screening for any abnormality psychologically. Mm -hmm. But when a, a normal, psych, you know, normal psychologically young person joins the army or any of the branches, they start becoming educated and learning the doctrine and the culture of courage. Honor, courage, commitment. That's what the Navy and the... Honor, courage, courage commitment. commitment. Mm -hmm. That's the ethos of the Navy and the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. The Army is the same thing. And never quit, never leave a person behind. And cowardice is looked upon by everybody in those services is the worst thing a person could ever be. Because what we do is we find ways to deal with fear and we don't act under the influence of fear. We mm -hmm. don't run from the enemy, we run to the enemy. We engage the enemy. Mm -hmm. we, we, do da we do dangerous and scary things. And uh, particularly the infantry. So the culture is so indoctrinated in, into young people that I don't think, I think they have the right tools to overcome fear. Mm -hmm. And then there's the leadership. There's the sergeants, there's mm -hmm. the, the members of the, the junior officers, mm -hmm. the, the senior officers who are supposed to keep an eye on <coughs> their members to make sure everybody's okay mm -hmm. emotionally and mentally. So I don't think that if Bird Doll was punished more severely or less severely, it's going to lead to any soldier saying, if it, if it, what happened to Bird Doll is gonna cause mm -hmm. me to do something. Mm -hmm. It's just so rare that I don't think that there is a problem in the service, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, of mm -hmm. people walking off post. I just All think right. that that is a, a, a real outlier mm -hmm. that had a lot of complicating factors, particularly mental health, poor screening, Mm -hmm. Bird doll shouldn't have been in the army, and I'm not blaming the army for the fact that Bird doll was captured or that he left his post. All right, okay, okay, yeah, I see what but, you mean. Yeah. But they put it. How do you sign somebody up who was d discharged from the Coast Guard for some psychological reason? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. that's real bad, Jack. And then and then in the first place, why did the, the, why did the army take him? The army shouldn't have taken him. 
Yeah, I shouldn't have taken him. Big mistake. Because it was not just on the word, a word on the lips. This is on the uh, black and white document. He was discharged by the guard. Coast guard. Coast guard because of a mental problem. Right, not good. So mental problems confirmed. Why would the army still take him? Big mistake. So Big mistake. Th I think they need more people. We we're short of hands. We're, so we are short hands, so maybe we don't look at them. You go back to 2007, 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two wars on. We need more bodies. We're mm -hmm. volunteer only. There's no draft. And they took someone they shouldn't have taken. And, um, you know, I think that um, I think that they got to keep an eye out keep an eye out for everyone but I think the senior enlisted people the sergeants the uh, mm -hmm. senior sergeants you know they, ha they it's okay for them to assume that the soldiers under their command are normal psychologically mm -hmm. and that I think it would be hard to look at a soldier and say I think this guy's gonna desert I don't think that that is coming through the yeah, you, you're, you're, you're right, you're right. Like maybe I, this guy yeah. needs a little time if out. You, yeah, if you were planning on an attack, you might show something, right? If you were planning on backing off, on being desertion, so you probably wouldn't show anything. It'd be hard to see that. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be, I think they know their people well, and mm -hmm. they know if somebody's weaker and someone's stronger, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's always a okay. top and a bottom in a group. Uh -huh. And someone might not be as equipped as someone else. Mm -hmm. And if they saw, but if they saw something where he was unreliable in combat, or mm -hmm. um, they should have pulled him out if they saw that. But I doubt that they did. I doubt that he was a sore thumb mm -hmm. that way. Um, but anyway, I don't think that more soldiers will desert. I think that's such a rare circumstance. I don't think it's a. It is bad, but not to the extent that it will overturn the culture of the military. No, no, right? no. The, I the, see. The culture will never. The culture in the military mm -hmm. is it's professional, Jack. They're okay. Pro, they have a lot of pride. Mm -hmm. Like on Veterans Day, most veterans should tell you, "You don't owe me thanks because I was happy to do it, mm -hmm. and I got more out of it than than I yeah. gave." That I didn't see, I that I didn't see. Yeah, so there was one event I was there for a Veterans Day, El Monte, I believe. Uh, Congresswoman Blitano was uh, doing something there. There was a, uh, and some old soldiers, over 90 years old. Oh, great. When their glories were mentioned, they were kind of <coughs> on their spran, spran, namely, spran on their feet, <coughs> trying to salute. And of course, they can't do it correctly and straightly, right? Yeah. Kind of in a very awful way, but it's uh, looking. Oh, it costs you tears. And the, how much they are proud of their glory, right? How much about the service they did to the country, right? They're wounded, they're on cow, couch, uh, crouches or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Anyway, so that explains. But to the society, to the non-military folks, to the to the civilians, right? So, do you think that's an impact? That's like quite a challenge. If my grandson asks me. Right? If my son they ask me, so what am I going to like, explain to them? So that is the part. Yes, I, I think that mm -hmm. I think that what we have to do is um, society. If, if if I comment on that, mm -hmm. is we have to remove our political views from it. Uh, we can't look at it as a right issue or a, on the left. If the right means he should have been punished more, and the left means he should have been punished less. Mm. I think that's a real mistake. And I think that it has to be looked at only on this case. Factual case. Because it's not left and right. Desertion can't be allowed. Uh, fighting people Regardless. No, you can't. It's a crime. It's, you can't have that. Mm. You can't have people in the armed forces deciding they, were, no, they don't want to do it anymore. Mm. It doesn't work that way. You can't have people misbehaving in front of the enemy, not fighting. We can't have that as a society. The good news is I don't think we have that as a society. Mm -hmm. Our fighting mm -hmm. forces do not do that. Birddahl mm -hmm. was an exception, and he was guilty of a crime mm -hmm. that, that he pled guilty to and now has been sentenced for. Mm -hmm. So I think as a society, we have to really look at that case mm -hmm. as a 
anomaly. And there's millions of people who have served who have not deserted, would never desert, mm -hmm. and have, uh, he's less than 1% of 1%. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, good, all right, good. But um, there are people, and there are people even saying that this guy, yeah. well, even after this whole thing is over, probably shall even have a hard time finding a job. Everybody recognizing him wouldn't give him a job. Give him a job. Do you think that sounds like a legit comment, or if he is re refused to a job, are they doing the right thing, or should that be even the case of discrimination, so on and so forth? Well, I mean, let's look at it. So a dishonorable discharge in the military is a lot like a felony conviction, uh -huh. and there's a lot that goes with it. So that takes a person out of a lot of employment, uh -huh. That person can't own a firearm, just like a felon. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so th I think that there's a stain on that person that that person has deserved. Um, a dishonorable discharge is um, such a shameful sentence to the service member. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I, I think that that is, although harsh, you know, I think it's appropriate. I don't think that a person can walk off a post and, and, and not be dishonorably discharged. I see, I, just, I see. I don't see how that conduct could lead to anything else. Do you? I, I really don't. Yeah, I, so, I, 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 really, uh, yeah. I, I kind of worried about this guy. <laughs> yes. I kind of worry about this guy. Yeah, I, it's complicated. You know, it it's is very, very much so. Um, and I, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what will happen to him. Mm -hmm. But the dishonorable discharge will go with him okay. for the rest of his life. Right, very good. Uh, my dear friends, while uh, today is one of the very, very precious moments that we can get uh, to uh, obtain the official information or more professional information about the case reading, because uh, to the public, it is our concern that we have kids to t teach. In the military, they have young soldiers to teach, right? And let's take a very short moment now. When we come back, let's take another look at our military, at our system, a system that will, even the president can sign a paper to get him back at such a high cost. And uh, it is good to recognize that as a value system, as a value, core value of our value system, especially on the Veterans Day. Right, stay with us, please. Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audience, is welcome back to the show. Uh, I'm getting an education here uh, by talking about uh, the Bergdahl case with my friend, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson has been serving in the United States Navy for how many years altogether? I was in for about 11 years. 11 yes. years, all right, that's quite a year of a service, yeah. And during the 11 years, you were dispatched to Iraq, I Iraq. In, in 2007 and 2008. Oh, right. oh, very good. And you came back whole piece. I was, <laughs> yes, I, I did. Lucky you. Hey. I was. Uh, many people mm -hmm. were not as fortunate as I was. I had mm -hmm. a job as an mm -hmm. intelligence officer um, that uh, most intelligence officers were coming home okay. Mm -hmm. The infantry, the special operations forces, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the EOD people, I supported the EOD people. Yeah, yeah. The what ones. was your rank? I was a lieutenant junior grade. Oh, lieutenant. So, yes, good. So <laughs> lieutenant, all right. Thank you very Here's much. Here's my Jack. salute. All Thank right, you. lieutenant. Thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, I know to most of my folks, my friends, they take their glory highly. And that goes all the way into the rest of their life. Because they once, no matter how big or small they are, they were back then in the uni, in the, in the unit, but they take that glory all the way, even to the death, right? In your case, 11 years is not a, not a small thing. Right? You live oh. five times of 11 years, I, well, that's it, right? Well, I mean, after you mature everything, yes. right? You put on top, five times, six times, that's it, right? So that's a big chunk of your life. Yes. So for that, in your life, now practicing as a trial attorney, you even walk, you, uh, I, can, I can bet, when you walk in front of me without turning back, without me recognizing you as Thomas Johnson, I know this guy was from military. 
you know? Yes. And you guys don't f do things in a different way. Right. Okay, now, that's those the part, those the positive part. How do you yourself wa value the part of your service oh. that you did to the country? Oh, Jack, I, I feel like I, um, I'm indebted to the service. I, I feel I'm so grateful that I had an opportunity to serve. I don't look, when I say glory, I don't, I, it's, I don't accept that because I, I appreciate it, Jack. But in my eye, that but is glory. I, yeah. But I'm so, mm -hmm. I have a lot, yes it is. Your definition of glory, mm -hmm. I feel pride in that. But I don't look down on someone who hasn't served. Um, I don't really look up to someone who has. I think I'm very lucky that I was. But I have the mind of going. <laughs> I, love it. I know you do. You check with your comrades, yes. right? If they need a commander or something, I'll go. Yeah, hey, I know you right? would, Jack. But I'm, I'll do that. Yeah. I'm lucky that I had a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. I was accepted into a, a good unit. Mm -hmm. That you know, it was a time of war where we could do some good. Yeah. And so a lot of things have to line up, and I'm grateful that I had a chance right. mm -hmm. to serve. And I love being in the Navy, mm -hmm. um, and I was third generation in the Navy, mm -hmm. so. Um, I'm happy. 11 years of experiences, how does it affect your life? I mean, the rest of your life. When you are going through something, we are back, you are back, right? Yeah. And you will change your behavior, your way of thinking, whatsoever, your conduct of the business, so on and so forth. So in your case, how much does it affect to your life? I think it impacted it a lot because the military has some absolutes, honor, courage, commitment, mm. get up early, yeah. make your bed, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. do right. what you say you're going to uh, do. And um, it's attractive to have those types of rules. And I, right. I, I think I, I try to carry those with me now, whether I'm a civilian or if I was still in the Navy. Oh, no, no. You make your bed, your wife does. My wife does. <laughs> oh, she does. Yeah. Well, who but, makes bed though? Yeah, my wife does. I mean, it. where where is your quality of making your own bed? <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? All right. You exactly. got me, Jack. But mm -hmm. the um, but those those types of absolutes, I think, are important in life, and we don't get them like we do in the military. In the military, they're painted on the walls, and they're part of our creed and things that we repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as civilians. Mm -hmm. We don't do that with each other, and mm -hmm. um, it's up to us to police ourselves on how we're doing with our integrity, um, our physical fitness. Yeah, one thing. Yeah, and yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, I miss that part, too. You know, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. he said, being out of the service is kind of like being a parent with an older child. <laughs> you, kind of, you kind of forget the late mornings oh, yeah, 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 and right, the crying right, yeah, baby yeah. and the diapers. Right, right, you just yeah, remember yeah, the yeah, good yeah, parts. Yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So I just remember the yeah, good parts. Yeah, those days, those days. Yeah. Like I, I recall my, my days, early days, uh, with a diaper and a bottle or something mm. like that. Yeah. I, I, I was busy. I, those days I was joking to myself. I was busy at the both ends. Yeah. <laughs> a bottle and diaper or right, something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I believe those impacts so positively goes into the rest of your life and to our service folks, to our veteran brothers and sisters or something like that. And now, to take another look into the system, into our country, I feel the same proud as you do, even though I was not so lucky to be a member of the service, because I see the kind of people that the system, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, the whatever system, have trained. That is so convincing. That is so convincing. I have a friend in West Covina, he was doing the service. When he walks to me, he go <coughs> like that. Still doing that jokingly, however, it's kind of like, you know, forming a habit already. Forming a habit already. And in a day-to-day -day job, when you say, hey, John, you know what? You made a big mistake. You know, okay. Do you understand you were an army, army member? And he will just flush, something like that, right? Now, to look at a system, a system who is so willing and did so to get one soldier back paid a cost of five detainees at Guantanamo Bay. Let me ask you, how much dollars, the taxpayers' dollars, are paid to get those five guys detained? Oh, right? I don't, yeah, it's hard. To, <laughs> it's hard. I have no idea. And how yeah. many people might right. have died? in the capture of the five guys, sure. right? And yet, with one signature, that goes for exchange of one life of a traitor. So, however, 
before confirming the traitor, he is, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's innocent, right? right? So for that, for the exchange, I will say that one life versus five, that is quite an education, quite a some piece for me, people like myself, to hold on to, to understand the system. Do you think so? I think, it's, um, I think it says a lot about the character of our country that we spend so heavily in, uh, to get one of our people back, uh, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's true on the battlefield, and it's true. It's true here, too. Yeah, it's very true, very much so. Every time the flag is flown so high, ba bom ba bom ba bom ba bom ba bom not for no reason. That's exactly right. Not for no reason. No, a lot, right. of, a lot of pain and sacrifice yes, in exactly. that flag. That's true. And we hold on to the center value of our value system. Yeah, even right. when it hurts. Very good, very good. I still remember uh, HCC, Honor, Courage, Commitment. Yes. Right. I, I put it into ACC, and that will guide me myself. I'm never too late to learn. Right. <laughs> okay, my dear friends, uh, thank you for watching today. It's a very important discussion about uh, the case. The case itself uh, has has passed on the news level. Uh, we let it we let it go, but we go behind the news to find out what we need to learn from the case. And we owe our thanks to my good friend. Thomas Johnson, who is a trial attorney, busy and there on a day-to-day -day basis handling those high-profile life, death case whatsoever, and he has been dragged over from court, and he has to go back to, for, for him, uh, we get this piece of education, including myself. I take this as a classroom myself, all right? So, thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. All right, thank good, you. very good. Thank you.